And welcome to the Take a Breather podcast with Stacey Every and Eric Almeida. We are certified emotional freedom technique practitioners. And on this podcast, we discuss how EFT can improve your mental and physical health by bringing real healing to the body and to the mind. Uh, we also have different types of practitioners visit us, us on the show to tell us about their methods and how they can facilitate deep healing. As always, if you're in need of support, you can always contact Stacy or myself, and we can help guide you on your path of personal healing. Our contact information are in the show notes. And if you'd like to help out the podcast, a five-star review on Apple Podcasts would help us a ton, or like and subscribe to us on YouTube. That would be fantastic. And today I would like to introduce Abby Beal. She is a certified classical homeopath who served on the board of the National Center for Homeopathy as conference chair and board president. And she also manages a speed reading company called Rev It Up Reading. Welcome to the podcast, Abby. We're happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you both for having me. I'm going to kick it over to Stacy for the first question. Yeah, I'm actually excited about this. I, I, I've heard of homeopathy for years and just don't know the details. So I'd love for you to just tell us a bit about, uh, about yourself and about homeopathy. Well, uh, I will say, Stacey, you are like most people I meet when I tell them I'm a homeopath, I get this like blank stare like, um, okay, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> so, um, and so I spend a lot of my days educating people about what homeopathy is. Um, if you'll indulge me, I want to tell you how I got into homeopathy, because I think that might be helpful. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when my son was nine months old, he's now 26. <laughs> um, when he was nine months old, he had repeated ear infections. He was my first child, never had, you know, understood illness with children much. And he ended up getting repeated antibiotics, probably about six or seven over the next six or seven months. He would feel better after the antibiotic was in him a week or two after it would come back and I kept, I was told it was just another ear infection. And now in hindsight, I now know it never went away, but um, I was trying to figure out what to do because they wanted to put tubes in his ears. And as someone who was like, mm, you're going to touch my baby, <laughs> you're going to put tubes in his ears. I know people do it all the time. I'm a wimp when it comes to that. And I just was looking around like, what could I do? Like who, who can help me here? And so I ended up seeing a homeopath on my own mother's recommendation. She got into natural health late in life, and I had no idea what a homeopath was, but she said, go find one. And this was before the internet. So I was looking in the yellow pages and, oh um, and I found one. There are only like two or three listed and found one. It was an hour away from where I live because there aren't many of us in the, or many homeopaths in general. But I went to see him. He was about 17 months at the time. And he, you know, he does not very verbal, so he couldn't say, so tell me about your ear infections, little boy. You know, it wasn't like that. So we observed him. Of course, I shared everything I could about my son's behaviors and his likes, his dislikes, sleeping patterns, all that stuff. And after about 90 minutes, he gave him a couple of little white sugar pellets. That's home homeopathic medicine, and, which he took freely, no problem. And um, his ear infection went away and never came back and was one of those like, hmm, that's really interesting, you know? And uh, so I was like, okay, so the next time he got sick, I don't know, four or five months later, I brought him back to the homeopath, gave him a couple more little pellets, he got better. I'm like, this is really interesting. And so that, that started my path of curiosity. And then I eventually went and said, let me learn about this stuff. So I, I had some symptoms of something and I went to see the homeopath and gave me a couple little pellets. And I was like, wow, this stuff is really interesting. And so um, ever since then I studied it and became nationally certified and now I'm in practice helping other people with it because it's just like the coolest medicine on the planet. So that's how I got into it. So what is homeopathy? Homeopathy, uh, when you go into a health food store, it looks something like this. If anyone can see, it's a blue tube. It's a, you can go into a health food store and say, can I see where the blue tubes are? And they'll, they'll immediately know what that is. It's from a company named Boiron, B-O-I-R-O-N. It's a, a French company that's all over the United States with all these great remedies. And um, so you can you know, pick and choose remedies from there, but I wanna make sure that the people listening know that homeopathy is not vitamin C, vitamin D, echinacea, you know, ginkgo, any of that stuff. Those are great. Those are naturopathic. It's not homeopathic, naturopathic is, is wonderful supplementation and it helps with your immune system. And I do take some, some of those supplements, but homeopathy is medicine. It's energy medicine made from plants, minerals, and animals. And so typically people take, typically take homeopathy when they're not feeling well, not necessarily as uh, a 
uh, preventative typically. So that's really the difference between naturopathy and homeopathy. I have to say that because some people say, oh yeah, I've done homeopathy. I take vitamin C and echinacea and I go, that's great stuff. That really is, but that's not homeopathy. So then I have to explain more. So now what questions do you have? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you said energy medicine. You can mm -hmm. explain that a bit, a bit more. For sure. So the pellets that are in this thing, in the, in the tubes um, are all taste the same. So I have a kit that has a hundred remedies in it. And if I opened up each one and tasted each one, which I wouldn't do, but if I did, they would all taste exactly the same. Why is that? Because they are sucrose pellets or lactose pellets, either one sucrose pellets that are covered with highly diluted water or in this case, homeopathic um, liquid that gets dropped onto the pellet for delivery. So how are remedies made? Just briefly, this, uh, I'll try and be as brief as I can. So imagine, um, let's say you have insomnia and you can't sleep at night and your heart is racing and you're just kind of anxious and restless um, and you keep thinking about the same things. And so it's kind of like if you had too much coffee or caffeine, it's like if you have too much caffeine, you're, it's like you're wired and you can't sleep and you're thinking about things. And, and so there's a remedy that's made from coffee called cafe accruda. That's the remedies made from coffee. And how did they make it? So they took a drop of coffee from a dropper and they put it into a cup or a glass of a substance that is filled mostly with water, a little bit of a preservative like alcohol or some, some other preservative, one drop into 99 drops. So it's a total of hundred drops in this cup. Then that cup isn't just shaken, but it is vigorously shaken. And so what, what homeopathy really is, is the energy of that substance that is vigorously shaken into that water. So it's shaken or pounded in this case onto like a Bible. That's how it used to be a long time ago, but now they have machines that do it. And that's what's called a 1C potency, one centesimal potency. In the stores, you're gonna find 6C, 12C and 30C. And so that 1C, let me keep, let me go through the next step. So that's 1C. You take a drop of that, okay? So you took one drop of coffee, put it into 99 parts. One drop of that liquid, that's one C, you put that into the next 99 parts. You do the same succussion, vigorous succussion, that's two C. One drop of that goes into the next. So by the time you get to six C, there's no material substance of coffee left, but you it goes higher and higher and higher. And in my practice, I use 200 C, 1000 C, which is one M, I can use 10 M or 50 M. That's how strong it can be. So the higher the number, the stronger the dose. And so it's the energy of the substance. It's not the substance itself. Does that make sense? Well, it, it does from a mechanical point of view, but not from a right. biological one. <laughs> so, so, well, so think of the water. Yeah. The water. The water carries the energy of the substance and that it's not just a stir, but it's a pounding so it, it, it shakes it really, really vigorously and, and it releases the energy of that substance into the water. So it's that energy that is what makes it so unique. Right. Yeah, so, it's, it, it's hard to wrap your head around it's, that. It's amazing. Well, I, I mean, I'm an energy, I, you know, I do Reiki, I work with energy. I, I have, you know, the concept of energy is, is something I'm familiar with. I'm actually, I, I haven't thought of how, I guess, uh, the question might be too complicated of why does it Go work it. why why does it work why does it work you know why like what's our like how or how does it work or what's how like so you take their you know the the sugar pill what's happening and like what's the body doing in response to that sugar pill so let's say let's say we did the cafe crudo we went all the way up to 30c right so we would take one drop of that and drop it onto a small vial that might look about this size something like like this if you can see it it's only like a, a half inch high of sugar pellets. So one drop goes on all those sugar pellets. And so those sugar pellets carry the energy of the substance in, in that remedy, right? And so why does it work? That's a really good question. How it works has been under a lot of study. And this is where the science community has, has lambasted the homeopaths, like, oh, there's no scientific proof, blah, blah. But there has been more proof since 2010 when the gentleman that had come up with the AIDS virus uh, understood how the AIDS virus transmuted, 
he came up with this thing called nanoparticles. It's in the water. It's basically the energy of the water. And so there's, there's now definitely more understanding of how it can work. All we know is since Hahnemann, who was the one who created homeopathy in the early um, 1800s, late 1700s, he, he's been using it. So anecdotally, we know it has worked, but now we have a little more concrete evidence. I mean, it's stuck around since, you know, 1800. So, you know, it's obviously doing something and people are finding it to be useful. Hmm. So when you have the sugar pills, what's like, what's, um, like, how, how do you prescribe it? Like, I guess I'm, I'm just interested in just the, my little bit of geeking out the, the nuts and bolts of it of like, yeah. so you have insomnia. So there's, they've discovered certain substances in, in, in this energy form. It's so there's helps a thing called it helps somehow. <laughs> it's well, it, it, there's a lot to learn in homeopathy, just so you know. I mean, they're mm. really so. This is, I, I think, homeopathy is one of the more challenging alternative medicine fields to be in because it takes so many things into account. If you only saw how many books I have in my office and how many more books I want, because it's, it's really about understanding the substances that are made in homeopathy. So, like I said, plants minerals and animals. So like we can do coffee, we can do um, a peregrine falcon. There's a remedy made from that. There's remedies from the Bushmaster snake. There's remedies from dog's milk, cow's milk, dolphin milk. I mean, so there's like 6,000 different possible remedies. Now I will say in my practice, I probably spend most of my time around 150 to 200 that are the main ones that most people have responded to. Okay, so I don't know all 6,000 remedies and nor do we know enough about all of them, but I probably use that many in my practice. So what we look at is this thing called the doctrine of signatures. So coffee, when you have it in material form will cause anxiety, insomnia, heart palpitations, maybe diarrhea, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas, so the remedy when it's in its energetic form is meant to ameliorate or I'll use the, the word cure, but help that situation. So we take the, the form of homeopathy and we say, so if you're feeling sick like that, we will give you cafe acruda because like cures like, that's how it works. Let me give a real life example. You get a sunburn, right? You get a sunburn. Everybody says, oh, I wanna put cold on it, wanna put cold on it. And it takes days and days and days for it to feel better and it's really painful. If you were so inclined to get your butt in a shower, a hot shower, and scream bloody murder through the hot shower for a few minutes on your skin, and then you come out, you're gonna feel a lot better. And so this is called Light Cures Like. And it, it's just amazing how that works. So I challenge everyone who gets a sunburn to do that. It's very difficult. I mean, you wanna make sure it's not blistering, but if you have just a really bad sunburn from the beach, and you can go into a hot shower and tolerate it for a few minutes, you'll come out, you know, after you're crying and screaming, <laughs> uh, feeling so much better. So, so like, I just burned, I just burned my finger this morning, frying oh. bacon. And I went straight for the, for the, ice. for the ice. And if I had mm -hmm. done warm water, it would have been a better solution. Yes. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Even Cause... better would have been a remedy called cantharis. Cantharis is made from a Spanish fly. And a cantharis is a remedy that is great for when you burn yourself cooking, especially. Fascinating. I had no idea it was a like, a like, a like, cures like, 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 cures like philosophy right. with homeopathy. So, so they, so yeah, so you're, you're anxious and you can't go to sleep. So you take something that actually, in fact, encourages anxiety, like coffee. Right. It's, so you take it in its energetic form. You don't take more coffee at that time. Right. You wouldn't right. take a material glass of coffee or cup of coffee at all. But I'm just gonna. Um, I'm assuming some people are gonna see this as a yep. as yep. a video. Right? Yeah. The video. So this is this is a homeopathic kit. This is something that you can buy online. It's 50 remedies that are meant to be used at home. There are 30 30 C potency, all of them, and the idea is that you begin to learn about what they're what they are. So cantharis is um, in here. Cantharis is in here. Cafe Acruda is in here. Um, there's so many different remedies for so many different re different purposes. I do teach this in a study group that I run every year, um, but there are plenty of online study groups. There's a Facebook study group. I mean, there, there are places people can go to learn how to use one of these kits at home. So you don't always have to run to the doctor for, 
ear infections, diarrheas, you know, bumps and bruises. You know, there are times you should go to the doctor, of course, I'm not saying never to go, but if you can treat your burn at home or your sunburn or, you know, oh, I, I ate something really bad at the restaurant yesterday and, you know, I'm having really bad diarrhea. Let me see if I can find something that can help me. And you just use these and they work incredibly well when you get the right one. Is it the kind of thing where it matters like what what so it, let's go back to the example of insomnia <clears throat> does it matter what the the root of the insomnia is as far Sometimes. as what, what you give them would you dig about you know dig in a little bit about what's going on with the person's life or what they were eating lately or their stress levels or their physical issues before giving them a remedy so there's two different ways to look at homeopathy one is where you could self-prescribe and but if insomnia is a chronic condition, meaning you've had it for many months, years, you know, decades. That's where someone like me as a professional homeopath needs to come in because you need a higher potency than something you're going to find over the counter. And so mental, emotional things fit, you know, combined with a physical thing usually needs like a 200 C or higher, but you can, you know, if, if just, let's say, I don't know, you've been overworked and you're just having a hard time sleeping and you're really bummed about your boss and it's only been a couple of weeks that you're feeling this way, you could look up remedies for insomnia, for overwork, for stress, for you know, being pissed at your boss or whatever and try, try a 30C potency and see if it does something. So I work with the chronic stuff that people have, you know, like arthritis and irritable bowel syndrome and migraines and um, trauma and depression and anxiety. I mean, all the stuff that is there for a long time. Mm -hmm. But people can learn to use this stuff at home for all the other stuff that comes up suddenly. For sure. Yeah, with the, uh, I, I actually, I'm, I'm curious about, um, like so far what you've been talking about, it fits into my brain as far as the physical conditions are concerned. But I'm, I am curious about how it affects um, anxiety, depression, the emotional stuff. You mentioned ADHD and ADD on your website. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I don't think if there's a difference in how... You, like, I'm just curious how it works. How, how, how does it work for that stuff? You know, what's, go, <laughs> what's, go, <laughs> what's going on when you take the sugar, if you're feeling depressed, what's the sugar pill doing for you? So it, it has to match the energy, you know, the energy that you're given has to match the energy of the person in, in their, and Hahnemann would call it their deranged state. Basically, you know, what illness really is, is where the, where the body gets stuck healing itself. The body wants to heal itself. You cut your finger, you get all paper cut, you know, yeah, it stings, it burns, but if you keep it clean, you know, within a few days it heals on its own. And so if you know that your body heals by itself, but then it gets stuck and has some chronic pain, there's some reason why. And at least I look at it as that the body speaks the mind. And many times there's what we call an etiology or a start. Oh, that stomach pain started when I was being abused or my migraine started when my grandmother died 25 years ago. You know, it's like it, the body is still holding on to that piece. And if we can mix the mental emotional piece with the physical piece, we can release it so that it, they don't have the migraines. You know, it takes a while. It's not like you go to the doctor, get two pills and you're quote unquote fixed. But what we help people do is to slowly but surely make each episode of whatever their issue is less frequent, less long lasting and less intense so that it gets to a point where it's really a non-issue, like allergies, that's a perfect example. Migraines is another one, yeast infections, urinary tract infections that are chronic, you know, that you try to slowly back them back down so the body just goes, oh, I used to have that, but I don't anymore. And then you don't need anything else. And you do work with the, for those chronic conditions. I, does, uh, you often work back to an emotional piece in those situations? Frequently regularly yes yeah you know and so the, the of course the person has to cooperate with that so so i do once in a while get people that are just very shut down and they just don't want to talk about their emotions but that's part of who they are so we even though they're like oh you know so and so is not going to talk about their abuse then fine then we then that means that they're very closed they're shut down you know they're suppressing their emotions and so that's a piece of their puzzle you know, the more that people tell me though, the better it is, <laughs> yeah. the more that people can become self-aware. And um, I love getting people to become more self-aware of what causes things, what makes it better, what makes it worse, what does it feel like, you know, and then they can start taking responsibility for their own healing as well. Hmm. So, so once again, 
so like you were saying you know the, the coffee the coffee ex the coffee item being used to deal with insomnia because coffee the symptoms of caffeine lead to symptoms of insomnia mm -hmm. so when you mentioned like this the allergy component so if someone has an allergy to cats they're taking the energy of a cat basically is, that, <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it like cat dander or something like that or uh, we don't have a remedy specifically called cat <laughs> um, we do have but um we do have like we have like like i said dog's milk dolphin's milk you know uh wolf's milk that kind of thing um but for uh, allergies to cats there's a couple of remedies and again there have to be other related um symptoms that match but remedies that can um work with an, a, a pet allergy it doesn't necessarily mean that that it's going to go away completely but sometimes people can tolerate being around animals much better once they've been treated. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's, so let me, if, so if I'm trying to see if, I, if the wheel of my brain is working right. So if someone's symptoms when it comes to a cat allergy, for example, is their face gets itchy, mm -hmm. then the energetic treatment would, would be something else that also causes itchiness of the face or itchiness in general, something like that. And then it would mm -hmm. still affect them in this in a similar way. Am I kind of getting it? You bit? are. And I want to clarify because yeah. um, I don't know if I would ever treat just a cat allergy because okay. the cat allergy is attached to a person. <laughs> and so this is where mm -hmm. I, I have to say that I think conventional medicine could do better is that when someone comes in with something, they only look at that thing. They don't look at the whole person. Okay. And so in this case, let's say, for example, the person um, is allergic to cats and whenever they're around cats, they sneeze, their eyes water, sometimes they start to wheeze, they have a breathing problem. But I also want to know things like, um, do they like to travel? And the reason I say that is there's a great remedy called tuberculinum that is given sometimes to help with people that have cat allergies, but also like to travel, maybe have long eyelashes as well. We look for all the different pieces of that person that match this remedy before we give it. So it's not like, I love when people say to me, so I have, a, I have a headache, what do you have? What can you give me? And I'm like, well, we have a lot of remedies that can work with headaches, but if you and 10 of your friends were standing in a line and said, you all had a headache, chances are you're all gonna get a different remedy because you experience your headache differently. And so the same thing with the cat allergies. Sometimes it's like, I'm fine when I'm in the house, but as soon as I leave, I start to sneeze. Or sometimes it's more like my eyes, I can't even open them up because they're so swollen and I don't even have to touch them. Um, so it, it's so individualized. Um, no, that, ma that, that makes, makes yeah, no, no, that makes a lot more sense. Cause I remember you, you showed me the breakdown from some program that you use. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it was really fascinating cause it was like, you had listed out every symptom that was that was mentioned mm -hmm. and then you and then on the top it was the the remedies and then like they, it's almost like they stacked up it's like you know this remedy was good for these different things this remedy was good for this and and then you mm -hmm. ended up picking one of the top couple of few to try based right. on like the full laundry list of what was going on and yes. so that, that makes more sense like you were saying like what you just said just now of a single symptom is isn't enough information it's too no. vague Yes. Like I, that would be the equivalent of someone, someone coming to one of like Stacy or myself and saying, I feel sad. And then yeah. we'd be like, well, well, what's going on? Like, yeah. that's not enough of a description of Fix us me. I'm you. sad. I'm sad. It's <laughs> kind of like, uh, what? And so, yeah. Right. So, okay. Mm -hmm. That makes more sense now. That's so interesting. Yeah. It's very interesting. I think homeopathy is just, it's, it's a challenge. I'll be honest. You know, there's some days I'm like going, Oh my gosh, why am I doing this? And other days I'm like, okay, I'm going to work this out. I'm going to do this with a client. Let's see what they do with it. And when it's successful, which happens a lot, it's just so exciting when someone comes back and says, I am feeling really well. I'm feeling so much better. I'm not anxious. I'm not depressed. I'm, you know, talking back to my boss now, instead of just taking it or, you know, whatever. It's like, I don't know what, what, what will happen when a good remedy is given, but boy, it's, it's, it's a good thing whenever it does mm. happen. That's so and, interesting. And it'll, mm -hmm. just to clarify, like there's stuff you can fix for good. Like this isn't just, mm -hmm. this isn't a band-aid. This is fundamentally right. getting rid of allergies or relieving a any number of chronic conditions or, per yeah. 
ideally sure. that's where that's where we're heading yes yeah so as i look at you stacy um looking at you and i see you have like pink cheeks at least that's what i'm seeing on zoom yes. i would actually take that into consideration but i if we were having an interview i'd say so oh i noticed you have pink cheeks are you feeling warm is that normal do you have rosacea you know, I would want to get a little more because your physical appearance, like long eyelashes, or sometimes when people talk, they get red in their throat or their ears get hot. Like, I want to know that stuff. It's that. So it's really important to see people. That's why Zoom, Zoom's actually been okay during COVID because I'm still, I'm at least seeing their face and their upper body. I do miss the lower part because for all I know, they're, you know, twitching their leg back and forth and they're being very restless or whatever. But um, we have to look at just the, the physical appearance of the person as well not just not just what they tell me so yeah so that that's an interesting well one reason i'm pretty sure i have pink cheeks that my skin reacts but i'm pretty sure i'm i um so i, I am dairy intolerance and so i've been uh, doing i've been using coconut milk and i think my body's starting to not like coconut milk anymore either interesting is that something homeopathy would help with <laughs> <laughs> so when when good remedies are given um i have it i have seen with some clients that their like their gluten intolerance or their dairy intolerance becomes more tolerable it's not like they go and eat you know pizza and bread and pasta in the same meal but they find they can eat a piece of pizza and they're fine or they can have uh, you know a piece of cheese and they're okay you know or an ice cream once in a while but so it's like they they they're less sensitive to it for sure. Yes, I've seen that a lot. But I, I've also, I, you probably know this, a majority of people in this day and age have some sort of a food intolerance and it's typically gluten, sugar, or dairy. And I will tell people if I see, you know, I say, so you have this cough, it's really mucusy, it's really powerful, and it wakes you up at night, it's like post nasal drip. Tell me about your diet and well i eat kind of cheese in the morning and i have yogurt at lunch and i have cheese at night i'm like okay you like dairy right and they go yeah and i'll go like well when you crave stuff like that that means your body is allergic to it so i so i suggest suggest that they take a couple of weeks off of dairy and look for dairy substitutes um and in your case you've tried coconut milk which obviously you're also having a sensitive issue to but for and within two weeks this person came back to me and was like even though I miss my dairy, I am feeling so much better. And it's like, it's not always a homeopathic remedy, but it's our broad view of a person, like a doctor, if they could only ask, you know, what do you eat? Or what's the mental, emotional stuff going on? And they could work with that. I, it would be great, but that's not how they're trained. But we are. I mean, most of us, we look for the, the broader picture. So we, we do recommend lifestyle issues. You're depressed, but you're not walking. You're not going out anywhere. You're not seeing people. You're not listening to music. What are you doing that makes you happy? And they're not doing anything. And you're like, we got to work on that. You know, what do you want to start with? You know, a five minute walk around the block. Great. <laughs> you know, let's just get some fresh air and move. You know, motion is the lotion. So, you know, I try to be a cheerleader and to get people into good lifestyle stuff in addition to a good homeopathic remedy. I want to ask, go back to what you just said about we crave what we're allergic to. Like mm -hmm. what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. What's totally. the what's up with the so is that a like, I, I'm just surprised the body is not being very wise about its decisions. Uh, the fact that we crave what's up with that? Like I don't know why that. It would is happen. wise. It's throwing off symptoms. It's saying this isn't good. My stomach oh. hurts when I eat diet, when I eat dairy. So I'm going to get diarrhea. So it's like, I love dairy, love dairy, love dairy. Makes me cough, makes me cough, makes me cough. Your body's yeah. smart. We're just not tuning into it. So we crave it so that it makes us sick so that we'll do something about it. Hopefully, if you know. Well, that's, I'll the, give you an, I mean, that's an issue. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge issue, right? People not being right. tuned in enough to their bodies in the, for, at all, much less their body's responses, much less having the emotional... Mm -hmm. I mean, because, because the craving is, um, you know, it's the emotional piece with the craving as well is so difficult to get over to, you know, like I, I drink coconut milk in my coffee and I'm really mm -hmm. quite fond of coffee and I'm already thinking, I can't believe I have to give up coconut milk too. So <laughs> <laughs> there's gotta be something. I mean, it, I don't it, it's, know. I, well, so it's about finding that it's about really paying attention um, to what you're doing. And, and if you are doing something every day or every other, like you eat eggs every day, you know, it's possible you're allergic to eggs. 
possible, not always, but it's like, if that's what you have to have, mm, you know, I would always look at that and go, let's look at that first. And, and you could take two weeks off of eggs and you could be fine and nothing, nothing changes. I'd say, at least you tried, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, or chocolate. I've seen people, I have to have chocolate every day. I'm like, let's look at that. There could be some, you know, body reaction to the chocolate that you're having, even though I, I'm so sorry, cause I love chocolate too, but I don't eat it every day, you know, and I don't need to have it every day. And some people are like, I have to have my chocolate every day. <laughs> so so it's, yeah. it's, it's the eating every day. It can, can eating it, so that you say, if, if you need to eat it every day, it can be an indica indication of allergy or sensitivity. If you end up eating something every day, can you end up with a sensitivity or allergy? Just like because of lack of food choices or because you're, you know, it, it's just easier to grab this thing every day. Yeah. That, that can lead and, to allergy. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I've heard from some nutritionists that if you can lay off of something that you are allergic to, but you like for like six months or longer, that when you slowly incorporate it back, you may not be as sensitive. Mm. Your body just needs a break from it, from what I've understood. I, I don't, I haven't tested it, but that's the theory that I've come to understand hmm. but hmm. by then hopefully you're on to better bigger and better things <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've had to do a similar purging of my diet i had um with my gut health stuff i had sensitivities to the the usual the, the usual suspects like you mentioned mm -hmm. and i think it was, it was i think it was like a year before I, it was like a year before i stopped craving it honestly mm. so i assume the sensitivity lasted that like, as long as you keep craving it the sensitivity is still there maybe i'm not sure not my bailiwick but yeah overall. yeah interesting yeah. but I, I help tease some of that out when we talk when i talk with people in, in an interview i i really try to find out what could be the possible offenders and we start slow i don't say you know let's take it all out you know but if you could just take out dairy for a couple of weeks even though it looks like gluten could also be it but let's just take out dairy you know and i i try to give them alternatives here's what you can you know what do you like to eat let's try to look for alternatives or are thankfully gluten alternatives, there are dairy alternatives, um, and there are some sugar alternatives, so. Do you have homeopathic remedies to help them with the, with the emotional piece of giving up foods that they love? <laughs> you mean that they're sad and they're feeling <laughs> deprived? Yeah, yeah, actually. Well, um, maybe if it's, if it's a part of their picture and it's preventing their healing, sure. Yeah. Yeah, we could, we could look into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was talking to someone who was, you know, like she had a bunch of food she knew she needed to let go of, but she had it's such a, a strong family connection to those foods that she was struggling with giving them up because of the social component with her, with her family. So yeah. that's, that's something homeopathic remedies would look at or take into account mm, or anything to give to all the family members. No, <laughs> no, no, to her, no, for her to be less, um, less grief stricken about the change she has to make in her life. You know, we try, there's, there could be, you know, maybe it's just an aversion to change or a fear of not being accepted or, um, or fear of being rejected, those kinds of things. If that's, if there's a theme of that in their remedy picture, then certainly they could start feeling like, you know, they could stand up to their family and say, I know you, I know we're Italian and we're supposed to have pasta all the time, but I can't eat it all the time. You know, I'm sorry, but I'll sit with you or I'll have my gluten-free pasta and I'm good, you know, whatever. So Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Mm. Yeah. It makes me reminiscent of that scene from my big fat Greek wedding when they were talking about the the fiance being a vegetarian and they're like, What do you mean he doesn't eat any meat? And then she's like, <laughs> and then like the aunt was like, I'll make a lamb, it's fine. <laughs> like didn't like click in her brain. <laughs> that lamb is lamb the is lamb meat. is still meat. Yeah. Yes, so. Right, exactly. <laughs> Crazy. So uh, yeah, so I mean with homeopathy, it, it's about the whole person, the holistic view. And it includes diet and exercise and self-care, um, you know, all that stuff. Hmm. I got to say, I mean, I know we talked about it before, before we turned the recording on, but just the way you describe how homeopathics work, it sounds like, it sounds like the same way vaccinations work, that you're hmm. taking something to, you know, I know the idea behind the vaccination is you give your body a, a thing to get used to, I guess it's not the same, I guess it's the same behavior, if not the same principle of how it works in the body. So with, with what, what I think you're talking about from what we talked about earlier. So homeopathy in general is meant to be given when a person has symptoms. That's really how we do it. So we can identify what are those symptoms, what makes, right, it, that's, what makes it worse. Yeah, right. But there a is a difference. Right. But, <laughs> but, but um, Sam, yeah. Samuel Hahnemann, who created or discovered homeopathy, 
really did this thing um, when there was scarlet fever in his town where he gave not just the people who were sick this remedy, but he also gave everyone else in the town this remedy as a preventative. And the, the people who got this remedy didn't get the sickness from their family member because they took this remedy. And so because of that, there's this thing now called homeoprophylaxis, which is not based on symptom picture, but it's based on trying to prevent an illness. So in Cuba, there was a really very powerful study of using homeopathic medicine on a disease there called leptospirosis. And they used homeopathic medicine in this province of Cuba as a way to prevent the spread of this really deadly disease. And they found that they're, they were very effective by giving it in water. They just put the pellets in water, they shook it, they gave it to, you know, gave a dose of it to every person in the province. And the, the level of illness was so low in comparison to the rest of the provinces in Cuba. And so there are studies that talk about the power of this thing called homeoprophylaxis. So with the current virus with COVID, it made some sense to some people, and I'm very grateful to them who did it, who said, well, here we are with another disease. Maybe we can find a way to make a remedy made from COVID that could help people have the energetic experience of COVID without giving people COVID, like in a shot, in, in a vaccine. Um, and it's, it's safe, it's effective, um, it doesn't have side effects, it never kills anybody, homeopathy has never killed anybody because it's energy medicine, it's not chemical medicine. And so they have a, a no-sode that was proved or created um, and tested by an organization called freeandhealthychildren.org. And if you go to that website, freeandhealthychildren.org, you'll see on the right-hand side of the website, it talks about the coronavirus no sode, it's called the no sode. And it has three parts of what they did. It's, um, you know, who took it, who responded, what the results were. And it, it was just very strong. And it made sense to me as a way to protect myself and my husband also from the coronavirus. And so we've done that. We've taken this remedy as a homeoprophylaxis. So again, it's a little different than what homeopathy is meant to be, which is to treat symptoms. But in this way, it's a preventative. So um, in addition to that website, just for anyone who's listening, there's a really interesting film series on real immunity, I think it's .org, realimmunity.org, where um, it's a three-part film series. The first one is free on the website, and then the next two talk a lot more about homeoprophylaxis. Um, but it's just, it just makes so much sense um, and how to keep people healthy without you know, injecting them with all kinds of adjuvants and extra things, mercury and stem cells and whatever else that goes into a person's body, who knows what they're gonna be able to manage. So with homeopathy, it just made more sense. Does that, I hope that makes sense. I'm trying, I'm trying to yeah. make it make sense. No, okay. Yeah, it does. It does. And in fact, if someone has a compromised immune system and is it, can um, they use homeopathy to yeah. help with any number mm -hmm. of, and is it something that you, that you would specifically like on it set of, or maybe even along with the flu shot, I'm going to do these the homeopathic remedies to also bolster my immune system against the flu or against X, Y, and Z different mm -hmm. infections. So to help. So you can, so there me. is a homeopathic remedy that's called influenzinum, which is made from a, from a flu. And so you don't necessarily need to inject anything into the body. Um, it, it's something that's a homeopathic remedy. Some people take influenzinum every year during flu season, just as a preventative, um, that's the homeoprophylaxis, and they find that they stay healthy during the flu season from the flu in general. So um, there's you, you different take, ways of looking at it. Do you take it every day or do you take it just once? Depends on the potency. Sometimes people take it like once a month, some take it every two weeks, some take it every week. Depends on how uh, exposed you are in the world. If you live out in a farm in the middle of nowhere and you hardly see people, once a month might be enough, but if you're in the city and you're around people a lot, maybe once a week, you know, it really depends on your exposure. Um, and you just take it as a, as a prophylactic type of thing. So I guess while I'm at it, I'm as well just, I'll go deep in this, that uh, free, free and Healthy Children talk about, they have a program called um, Children Vaccine Homeoprophylaxis. They have created a homeopathic kit made from made remedies from the diseases that most kids get vaccines like 
pertussis and smallpox and polio, they have remedies made from these diseases. And it takes about 44 months, I guess, to fully vaccinate a child using this process. But of course it has to be a dedicated parent that's willing to do it and you give the child the disease in the, in the homeopathic remedy. And um, most of those kids, uh, I would say, a majority of those kids are much healthier than the kids who've been actually vaccinated. And they're slowly coming out with studies about that that the non-vaccinated children are healthier than vaccinated children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it's powerful wow. stuff. It's powerful yeah. stuff and not a lot of people want to believe that and I get it uh, because of what we've been told over the years. But if you really wanna look at it, um, there's a book's co- book called Vaccine Free that you can read talks about parents who've had kids, some of their kids were vaccinated, some and others weren't and the difference between them is really very startling. So. Mm. You know, things like asthma, ADD, ADHD, mm, people who have not been vaccinated, that's not part of their life. It's, it's been more, those who've been vaccinated have those diseases. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of those, those consistent um, themes. It's just, well, it's just well known that there is some pop, portion of the population of people vaccinated have a bad reaction to the vaccine. It's just one of those you know, it's not even a bad reaction. It's just their body starts to create symptoms. It just starts to have these illnesses, autoimmune, a lot of times autoimmune diseases mm-hmm. and other illnesses. So it's not even, they, they could have been fine when they got the vaccine. They don't have to have a reaction at the time, but over time they could have more like asthmas and allergies. That's a lot of what we have seen with that. Right. So yeah. Um, interesting. I had a, it's kind of I had sort of a little off-topic question. I don't know if you had a, a follow-up question for the vaccine, go for it. Go off topic. Yeah, oh. um, not off-topic completely. <laughs> just um, I'm thinking about the. I'll immune... bring you back. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, I was thinking about the immune system in general, and um, uh, I'm thinking of I work with cancer patients and mm-hmm. how. Uh, so folks in cancer treatments it basically wrecks their immune system, and I'm wondering if those same remedies against disease would still work with someone who's been, had the full gamut of cancer treatments with radiation and chemo mm-hmm. and stuff. So that cancer is an area that I honestly haven't done a lot of treatment in, but I know enough about it and I do know who to refer people to um, who really do specialize in it. And so it is somewhat of a specialty with that. And there are some people that will do homeopathy to counteract the side effects which also can be very helpful for people who have chemo radiation side effects. And some people decide that they only want chemo or radiation and homeopathy, you know, so it just, you know, again, it's not an area that I specialize in. So I never want to say that I I will treat people that way, but um, certainly there are people in the field of homeopathy that specialize in it. Mm. Yeah. I know that once the immune system is, is damaged, some of the more natural treatments aren't as effective anymore. So I was curious if homeopathy was still able to be used for, for folks yeah, in that situation. It can. So it's, it's, that's where we get into, we don't necessarily look for cure. In that case, we look for palliation, which is basically making someone feel better with what they have until such time as, as life doesn't continue for them. So it's, it's not like they're in pain and, and in horrible discomfort in their last years of their life, but let's make them feel as better as they can living with that, that thing. Um, so it's a palliation, not necessarily a complete amelioration, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I want to recommend a book. I read it recently called Radical Remission. That is a really powerful book about, um, and it comes and, and, and it includes the nine healing principles from a Netflix movie called Heal, H-E-A-L. That was awesome, I saw it. It was really awesome. And so this kind of expounds on that. Now I don't have cancer, but I read it and because it says, you know, the the nine or 10 different things that you can do to heal yourself from cancer. But if you read it and you don't have cancer, you can look at the things that you can do now to prevent it. And it's really cool stuff. I mean, it's it's doable, it's doable stuff. But a lot of it is coming to terms with your demons, your mental and emotional issues, your anger, your frustrations, you know? Well, that was something, um, Stacy. someone recommended us that book a while back that it, it was all about how physical, being able to connect physical symptoms back to 
what was mm -hmm. some kind of a mental or emotional issue. Mm -hmm. And I, you remember the book? You, you have it. You bought it. Uh, this is the, the one I'm just, I'm just showing here. Oh. oh, 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 the, um, you mean the, um, the metaphorical connection to physical illness, that one? Oh, I, that yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting. Yes, yes. Mm. But it's, it's, from what Abby was just saying, it's that's, it's the same thing in the, just going the other direction. Like we, mm. like we look, we would use that resource, that, uh, that book to, to give us more insight, you know, if this person is having, you know, chronic this or chronic that, we can look at it and be like, okay, based on, based on the research done within this book, there's a, there's some emotional connection to this, and then we can mm -hmm. see if we can see using EFT if that can bring yeah. us there. And yeah, and so what, what Abby was she's talking about is doing the same thing just in reverse. It's just like treating you know treating. The physical symptom with the energetic homeopathy and thus mm -hmm. it going after the emotional and mental component of it as well it's yes. it's, it's really interesting it is yeah the um <laughs> the nine factors are mm -hmm. ch changing your diet taking control of your health follow your intuition using herbs and supplements releasing suppressed emotions increasing positive emotions embracing social support and deepening your spiritual connection. That just and sounds then, like someone who's going to be very happy. I mean, <laughs> and, well, that's really what it's about, is, yeah. right? I mean, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, and and you know, fundamentally, there is there is enough hard science to verify that negative emotions to the extreme do lead to to illnesses mm -hmm. you know there what there's that there's that classic one with um something with heartbreak that like when you lose a beloved person and you're oh, like yeah like, a broken heart is an actual yeah, condition a yeah because yeah. mm -hmm. like even you know like even to use like a famous example when um when the actress that played princess leia died yeah i, I forget her, the names carrie fisher died and, and her mother debbie reynolds died De debbie reynolds died within the month within a month and mm -hmm. so like that's not a coincidence that is, you know, you know, no parent wants to lose a child and, mm -hmm. and that devastation can, can lead into a biological response, even one's own death. And so like, there is a lot, there's already evidence of that, that, you know, that severe mental or emotional distress, you know, how many people, you know, complain about muscle pain and discomfort because of stress in their life or they, you know, acid reflux or postnasal drip or digestive upset, you know, diarrhea or constipation or any, you know, like it makes sense that if, if those things continue in intensity and in length, it would then lead to the worsening of those illnesses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, perpetual acid reflux could lead into some form of throat cancer because you're constantly refreshing the cells in your esophagus and thus increasing the probability of there being an error and thus cancer same with the other illnesses so it's mm. it's really fascinating really yeah, fascinating the, the body is very fascinating and what it does yeah. the mental emotional component for sure and so I, I, oh, no go ahead I, I was going to ask a cheeky question, but you can go first, Stacey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get ready for the cheeky one. Yeah, I, I actually, it was actually, I'm not sure what the question is, an observation of how much, how much I value uh, homeopathy. I can see where it's a really great place for people to start with um, feeling better. And I can see it being like, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, we're not encouraged to see the emotional connections to our physical illness, illness whatsoever, even though, it, it, as Eric said, it's all the studies are there, and it, but people it's, uh, over and over again are, are providing evidence, but people aren't actually doing anything with it on a, in a, in a general way. So, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think in this country, we're just generally tend to be fairly suppressed and expressing a lot of our, what we perceive as negative emotions are not okay. So I could, I love how homeopathy, I could see being like a slowly, you can kind of like well, I, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the insomnia. 
And so you work with that and actually I'm really stressed out. It's, I can see it being like a slow way to introduce someone to investigating their and you know, more of their internal workings and get like help educate themselves about their own bodies and their emotional states as you work with them, the physical stuff first, and you can kind of peel away layers and, and with literally sugar pills in such a gentle way. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, exactly. And I wish that we got people who come to us first before they go into the conventional medical model, because I end up uh, in homeopathy is almost like a last resort for people. And I wish it was the other way around. I wish that we were the first place that people would go. And if homeopathy didn't work for them, then they would go their merry way somewhere else. But a lot of times if they did start with us, then they would not have possibly gone on to these medicines that they have to take every day for years at a time that for most of the time they're coming back to me because they didn't work. Um, you know, people who are depressed or anxious on their intake form, and I see that they're taking, you know, Wellbutrin or some other um, antidepressant, I, I'm, I'm just saying, so how long have you been on this? I've been 20 years. I said, well, is it working? And they go, well, I don't know. I'm still depressed. I'm like, that's, why would that's, somebody that's wait know, 20 years? <laughs> why would you wait 20 years? Because my doctor said I should take it. Mm. I'm like, Wow. Like you're still depressed after a year of being on this thing and be my, or even six months, you're like, this isn't working. But people keep hoping and praying. It's the, it's the definition of insanity of doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. And then after you know 20 years, they go, wait a minute, this isn't working. And then they, then we get them, you know, and, and I'm happy that they come, but boy, wouldn't it be nice if they came before they started all that stuff? It would just be lovely. <laughs> It, it's no, so true. The mindset's because, not there. Yeah. You no, know, it's so true in a very bizarre way with, with especially with with mental health health illness health conditions. I want to say illness, but conditions mm. that there's there's almost just a resignation towards that because like if you broke your arm and then you got a treatment from the doctor and your arm was still broken six months later, <laughs> you would stop the treatment and then. Be like, can someone reset my bloody <laughs> arm? Like, so like it's that same kind of thing. And it's like, right. yeah, you know, you know, the, the conventional pharmaceuticals when it comes to mental health conditions, they take time to be effective. But if if they're not doing enough or they're doing nothing, and you're dealing with all of the slew of side effects that you get from them, because none of them are benign, mm. like, you know, unfortunately, people people just kind of don't just stick with it. And then once again, depending on the conventional medical doctor you get as well, that's all they all they do is just here's the script and they move on. Mm -hmm. Instead of it being like, you know, well, why are you feeling sad? And then their response is, oh, I'm, I'm lonely. I have no friends. I, I have no close people in my life. And it's like, all right, I'm gonna prescribe you friends. <laughs> and then you know or therapy or, or therapy or like you know or like i'm gonna prescribe you to socialize or whatever and like and then eventually and then be, and then you know sick you know they'll check in again and be like so how are you doing now i'm like oh i feel better because i have friends now and it's like mm -hmm. well there you go you didn't need the prozac though you know the prozac may have helped temporarily to alleviate how you were feeling but it wasn't getting it wasn't stopping the source which was mm -hmm. the isolation and that mm -hmm. hypothetical right but um all right, so on to my cheeky question. Oh, you didn't ask that yet? Okay. I didn't ask you yet, no. So here's my cheeky question. What stops someone from simply taking all of them? All the remedies? All the remedies. What would stop someone from just taking all of them? Or what would happen, I guess, would be my question. Like, like, like if each remedy is designed to benefit different things, mm -hmm. what would stop someone from just saying, you know what, let's just be prophylactic towards everything? <laughs> across the board you're giving someone an idea that i never had <laughs> like, this is not no. a recommendation this no. like this like you wouldn't take every medication at a pharmacy totally. to kill you oh my god like no so all right so you go into let's say a health food store and you mm -hmm. have a cold right and you don't know anything about homeopathy but you've been told that homeopathy could work so you go to that place mm -hmm. where they have the remedies and you see these blue tubes you don't know what that is but then you see a box that says cold calm it's a boron product and it's what's called a combination remedy okay. and in there if you turn it around you'll probably find six eight different remedies in there in a very low potency that are combined together and if you take that and you start to feel better the way that i look at it is there's one remedy in all those eight 
that's really working on you. The other seven really have no business there because they, they're not resonating with you. So you could take all 50 remedies from this kit, a little bit of each. And if you start to feel better, I can say it's one of those 50 remedies that matched you, but I okay. won't know which one. Got it. So yeah. it's, it's a shotgun so, method. It's just, you're just shooting right. everything at it. And then gun method. Yeah. <laughs> but then, but yeah. unlike conventional medication, it's. Oh, it's poisonous. It would be poisonous if you well, took no, all, po- the, no, all no. the medicines. No, no, yeah. Right. Conventional medicine would kill you. Yes, it wouldn't take yes. you very far. Right. But um, right. but with but the homeopathic ones, if you're taking something that isn't that is not meant that doesn't serve you in that moment, it does nothing. Correct. If it doesn't match your symptoms, it, it, it is, won't. It won't do it anything. It definitely it won't do anything. And so I'm glad in a way that Voron has these combination products because some people now get turned on. Oh, I've taken homeopathy, I took cold calm or sinusalia. Mm. And they like it. And I'm like, great. So now you know the power of homeopathy. And then they start to learn if they decide to learn more and understand that it's really one of those remedies that's resonating with you, not all of them. And that's okay. It's just like, I want them to have a favorable feeling for homeopathy. So and then, and, okay. that makes, and that makes a lot of sense. Cause if someone took like the cold calm that you mentioned mm-hmm. and then they noticed, you know, a, let's throw like a 50% improvement in their symptoms, they might then come to you and be like, I took this and I feel somewhat better, but I want to keep going. And then you, and then you could be like, well, one of these six or seven that's in it is the, is the one you need in a higher concentration. Right. And so right. let's, and then, and then you would do your intake and be like, okay, it let's try this one at, you know, instead of it being, I'm going to make, I don't I have no idea. Maybe, maybe they're at all at 60. Maybe you give it to them at 30 or six or 50 C and be like, just mm. try this one on its own and let's see how it goes. And if it punches it out, then you're like, well, there <laughs> it is there. That's the one right. that did it for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you, you're on the right path. Exactly. Okay. Right. That's so interesting. Yeah. Cool. So the best part about homeopathy is if you take the wrong remedy, it's not going to work, especially the ones that you find in the store, 30 C potency or under anything from six, 12 or 30 C you're fine. You don't want to take two hundreds or one M's without the guidance of a professional, that's not a good idea because that could be a problem. Okay. And I assume if people think, oh, I, I, um, I want to try homeopathy because I heard about it from Abby Veal on the podcast <laughs> and, they yeah. ta- and they take something, it may not be that homeopathy doesn't work, it's that they, they have something chronic going on that needs a stronger dose. Right. And so when you go into a health food store and you see all those blue tubes, you could probably see three or four different ones that have the description on there for runny nose or for you know thick mucus or something like that. And so you pick one, if it's not the right one, then it's not gonna do it. And all those remedies are good for so many more things than whatever it says up on that little sheet in front of the remedy. If they have to give you one or even on, on, um, so on, so on the tube itself, they will have, it'll say like Arnica Montana, it's like my favorite remedy, by the way, relieves muscle pain and stiffness, swelling from injuries, discoloration from bruising. It's great, but it's also good like if you got into a car accident and you had a concussion, you might want to take Arnica. Um, so, so it's similar yet different. You don't know that it's great for after surgery um, for that. And so it, it has one thing in it. Oh, a, a story that I tell is I had a gentleman come to me and I wanted him to take a remedy called Costicum. And I wanted him to just start in a 30C, just see how he did with it. And so he went, I said, please just go to the store. And I, when I work in Northampton, I said, go to, go to Cornucopia. He went there and he calls me from the store and he says, Abby, you said to get Costicum, but it says on here bedwetting. And I was like, I get why you're calling me. I said, <laughs> forget what it says and just get the remedy. Okay. Cause it is good for bedwetting, but it's good for a thousand other things, especially the thing that you have. And so he got it. It was like $8 for a blue tube and he took it and he really started to feel better. And then I ended up giving him a higher potency and he's all better now. So, mm-hmm. so I get it. So you go to the store, like, why would I buy something for bedwetting? I have digestive problems. Like, okay, <laughs> because you need to know, you just need to know homeopathy is pretty unique. <laughs> what are some, that, oh, oh, go ahead. I was just, I was just gonna say that the guidance makes a ton of sense because it it would be no different than someone walking into a pharmacy and just looking around at all the bottles and being like, I have a headache. What's here for pain relief? And all of a sudden it's like, instead of them taking Advil, they take morphine. And it's kind of like, well, you got the pain relief, but Jesus, like, what are you doing? And so it's that same kind of thing. It's, you know, lots of, in the conventional drug world, it's the same thing. There are lots of drugs that 
you know, like, uh, there's a common one in the mental health world. There's some, there's some seizure medication. I can't remember the name of it. I think it, I think it's a seizure medication that's really good for depression or ang- or pain or something like that. And it's one of those kind of mm. like, so it's kind of like, wait, I don't have seizures, but it's like, oh, it, it, it helps mm. anyway. And it's the same, it's in a weird way, it's similar. Yeah. Um, but you have to know what it is. You have to know what it is and, and, and have the guidance yeah, once again. Have some from guidance like or yourself. education. I will tell you, people can learn a lot of this. It takes a while, a lot of patience and a lot of experience, but you can learn how to, to treat some of it yourself um, or go see a professional, <laughs> one or the what other. Was, what was your question, Stace? Yeah, what, what, what are some of the, more, the common conditions that you help people with? <sighs> wow, um, they're pretty wide, but I'm going to say... A lot of times there's anxiety, there's depression, there's trauma, past trauma in someone's life that's affecting them. And then a lot of related pain, migraines, arthritic pains, stomach um, uh, leaky gut, um, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, Yeah, those are like, a, a lot of that stuff is very common. Urinary tract infections, yeast infections, you know, chronic things that come in. Um, those are a lot of what comes in, but then I'm just trying to think what else it is. But I do treat a lot of women who are also either approaching menopause or already in menopause. So I have perhaps an older women population too in my practice. And so that's very interesting. Some of them still have hot flashes after 20 years of being in menopause, or they're having issues just, you know, dealing with, you know, getting older or, you know, aches and pains, whatever. So I also treat babies and children. I treat families, you know, so it's just whatever, whatever comes is what we, what I work with. <laughs> I don't have a specialty, let's put it that way. Uh, but I do know like cancer is not something that I want to treat. Um, I know my limits or like Lyme disease. I really, I can identify it, but I don't want to treat it. So I, I can deal with the generic general, you know, everyday chronic crap <laughs> that people have. <laughs> Yeah, autoimmune, uh, like all the autoimmune conditions like um, Hashimoto's and rheumatoid arthritis and that I, uh, that I can M- MS okay. and- That's cool. okay, that's okay. It's, it's more those other, those two things, cancer and Lyme are, those are, those are deep. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those include more medical understanding. The others just throw off a ton of symptoms. And once the, as long as we have symptoms, it doesn't matter the diagnosis. Mm. 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 Nice. A lot of food for thought. I love it, your questions. For sure. <laughs> Thank you for your curiosity. It, it, no, I absolutely. Thank you for ants for 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 just teaching us. It's, yeah, it's very fascinating. I, I do find it so interesting. If people want to mm. find, like, if people are interested in talking to you some more, or working with you, how can they find you? Oh, well, thank you. Um, they can go to my website, Homeopathy Healings with an S dot com, and there's all kinds of information. I have some interviews up there, and information about homeopathy, and then how I work my appointments and a way to contact me there. So that might be the best place for people to go. And you're, you're doing telehealth too, still, right? Oh man, ever since COVID, it's, it's been, you know, as much as I really love seeing people in person, my practice has exploded because I, I don't necessarily have to work with people in my own community anymore. I can work with people around the country. Um, I actually treated somebody in Dubai. That was a wild experience. That's wow. awesome. Oh. It. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm not sure I would do that again. But, <laughs> the <laughs> but time difference well. is tough. <laughs> it was tough. It was, it was more about getting them the remedy because they mm. have oh. restrictions and getting, they have some remedies there, but not the remedy that I needed this person to get. So gotcha. we figured it out. But, you know, so I, I do a lot on Zoom and Skype and um, prefer that I see people, especially the first time just so I can you know, see what they look like. Like I can see you get pink cheeks or your, your ears get hot or whatever. So mm-hmm. yes, thank and you. I don't think we ever said that you're, lo- you're located in Northampton, Massachusetts, yes? My office when I meet with people in person is in Northampton, correct? Yes, Great. and I meet with people right now just on Mondays. I only go up there one day because not everybody's ready to come back and mm-hmm. uh, I get that. So I do more, more things still f- you know, from home on Zoom. Great. Very cool. Yeah. So do you have any last words of wisdom for us as a final, <laughs> final things to, to like, let people to know about? So I would say to, if, if any of this made any sense to anyone who listened to this and you've never taken a homeopathic remedy is the next time that you have some acute issue, get a remedy and try it because there's no harm done. If it's the wrong remedy, it's the wrong remedy. The, the remedy to have on hand is Arnica 
because everybody falls down, everyone bumps their knee, everybody has some sort of surgery, a tooth pull, something where your body has been offended uh, by something else and you're bruised and hurting. And so Arnica is a great, I call it the gateway drug into homeopathy <laughs> because once people take it and they're like, wow, this really worked well, you know, then, then they're like, then they might want to learn more. So I just say, try a remedy. That would be my words of wisdom. Please try because mm. you'll never know unless you do. Mm. So, yes. Thank you. Thank you for this great interview. I really appreciate your questions and the, the opportunity to share what this is about. Cause I think, um, a lot of people don't know. So hopefully they've learned. No, for sure. And, th and thank you for joining us. It's, it's massively yeah. fascinating and yeah, it's just one of the, like you said, it was one of those kind of like in the beginning kind of thing. So. <laughs> right, exactly. And if people have questions, you know, connect with me through my website, my contact information is there. So more than happy to answer questions and stuff. So awesome. Great. Well, thanks yeah. so much. And, um, and thank you listeners and viewers for joining us and we'll talk with everyone next time.